Thanks for joining us for today's message. If you'd like to support this resource and others like it, you can do so by visiting our website, thechapel.cc, and select the giving option that works best for you. Enjoy the message. So, uh, summer's here, right? Some, all right, six people, that's fantastic. All the parents in the room are like, so what, right? Summertime, summertime at the chapel is gonna be incredible. Listen, yesterday at Fred Howard Park, over in the beach area, we spent over two hours baptizing people, following Jesus' example and being water baptized is absolutely incredible. We hear, we'll talk more about that later. But man, I'm just telling you, it was such a great moment. It was unbelievable. It was packed. I mean, it was just wonderful. It got hot. It got really hot. I just want to let you know. You know you did. So we had a great time. Listen, take out your worship guide because not only is it summertime and summertime at the chapel with our groups, with our day camp, with our internship, but we're kind of used to this in Florida, are we not? Like evacuation route because we're right on the right at the beginning of what hurricane season. Everybody in Florida loves hurricane season, don't we? Don't we just love looking at the spaghetti models? Aren't they just so clear, right? Don't they really just forecast exactly what we should expect? Every time we see the weather now, we're going to be looking at the peninsula of Florida. We're going to be looking to the east to see what's brewing where in the Caribbean to see what could be coming our way, right? So are you guys with me this morning? Are you ready? Are you ready? Listen, because it's going to be, it's going to, we're going to have a little fun, or at least I'm going to have fun, and you probably won't like it, but I'm going to have fun because it's summer fun time for me, okay? So, so here's, thank you, one clap. Did you hear that? One, one lowly person. Yes, pastor. Here's the idea. This is what we want to do this morning. Um, this year, uh, is our biggest internship class we have ever. Our leadership internship for this summer is our biggest class we've ever had. I mean, it's absolutely unbelievable. If you don't know, we are leasing Trinity College. We did it, we started last year. We're leasing even almost, almost now the whole campus throughout the summer. So it's absolutely unbelievable. So, uh, but at the same time, we're talking about evacuation. So watch, what, this is welcome to what goes on in my head. Are you ready? So, so, so at the same time, at, during an evacuation, if you remember last year during Irma, uh, my wife and I, we live in flood zone A. So uh, we got that wonderful like bullhorn announcement, you must evacuate, you must evacuate now. They're not very nice when they come around like that, right? They just, they don't, it's not, actually not a suggestion either. They don't go, listen, there's a storm brewing and you might lose everything. You might want to leave. They don't really say that, do they? They just kind of come straight out and tell you, you got to go. There's a predetermined route for evacuation. So when there's danger and when there's destruction, perhaps, the way to get out is this predetermined, what do we say at the chapel? Just lean in. There's this predetermined route known as an evacuation. This is the way you go. This is the way we've determined for you. This is the way how you get out of arm's way in a sense. Does that make sense? Everybody get it, right? But, but the internship is happening at the same time hurricane season starts, right? So one of the things that we found like fascinating is uh, one of the things that I get to do is be around the next generation leaders, and we love it. But I actually get to speak to them, not, off, not a lot, but enough, but I get to speak to them with no filter. Just like no filter. There's a little bit of a filter, trust me, okay? But, but really, I just kind of like just, we just say it like, kind of like the people who tell you that there's an evacuation route and you gotta get out and you have to leave. It's just kind of, it's not a suggestion, it's not, it's just, and what we have found is our internship is invite only, and, and they keep coming. <laughs> they keep coming, and it's just like, we just say it. Listen, this is the way it is. This is the way it is. It's not a suggestion. We're not a suggestion committee. This is, this is it. This is what God says. This is why he says it, and this is why we should live according to the way God has made us. We just say it. 
we say it, I say it with very little filter. Very little filter. Let me say it again. So, I, I, very little filter, I'll say things. And I know that I can't talk to you guys that way because you wouldn't come back next week, right? <laughs> You'd be like, oh no, I'm not coming. You guys wouldn't come back next week. So, what I'm gonna do is talk about evacuation route, predetermined route, when destruction is coming, right? So I'm not gonna talk to you that way, but I'm gonna show you what it would be like if I talked to you like we talked to the interns, our leadership. So it's, I'm not talking to you, I'm just showing you what it would be like if I was to say it, it to them. So you're just, so it's not, don't get mad, don't get upset, don't just, because I'm not talking to you, I'm just going to show you what it would, kind of like we just say it. So just sit back, it'll be fun, I think, I hope, if not, you know, there are plenty of other great churches in the Pinellas County area, right? Yeah, I just want to say, just, just like, here it is, because sometimes you need to be told information, we all need to be told information, just straight out, because our lives are depending on it. There's an evacuation route that's been a pathway that has been determined already when danger is imminent. And I thought it would be fun if I showed you the way that we continue to speak to our leadership interns. It's going to be an amazing year. Our leadership interns will actually be putting on our day camp like they did last year, our Toy Story free day camp, and we already have over 400 first through fifth graders signed up. All right. So I just thought when we talk about evacuation, I thought I'd do it in a way like, because I'm, I'm not talking to you, I'm just showing you the way that we would say this stuff to them. So you, so you know, everybody ready to lean in? Are you ready? His evacuation starts with this. You got to take control of your schedule. You got to take control of your schedule. Let me tell you what's happening. We are filling our calendars with things that don't make a difference for the kingdom of God or actually make a good difference in our own individual lives. We don't. We, we, we're filling our calendar with things that don't matter. And the thing that you have and I have that are equal is time, is time. And what's happening is we're squandering, we're squat. This is what I would say. I'm just showing you what it would be like when I talk to the interns. It's not to you. It's just kind of to show you. So you're kind of like peering in. So it's not to you. It's just because our calendars wind up getting filled. Listen, and I want us to understand this biblical principle. It's better to have one handful with tranquility and peace and contentment than it is to have two handfuls with toil and chasing after the wind. We've got both hands full and our hands many times are full of things that don't do us any good in life to where we're going as individuals, as parents, as professionals, let alone Christians. We're filling it full of things. Two hands full, and we walk around, look at, look at all I'm doing. Look at all that's going on. Look at everything. Ah. But you're staying up till 3 o'clock in the morning playing Call of Duty, which means absolutely nothing in the grand scheme of life. This is the way we, we talk to the interns. Is, and they keep coming. So you just listen, not to you, but just the way, this is the way we, don't be offended, because this is the way we would say both hands are, see what I have found is it is hard to have God's best life that he wants for you when both hands are full. Because God wants to get into our hearts, into our lives, so he works in us and through us, but there's no room. It's hard to have God's best. So, so what happens is we're just living like life to the brim in every minute. And here's a concept I want us to get. It's a non-negotiable. This is the route you take when disaster, and I'm telling you, when I find a person, when I meet a person, when I talk to a person whose life 
or a portion of their life is falling apart, I can point back to the things in their life that are either calendared that don't matter or the things that aren't calendared that should be there. Because the concept is don't prioritize your schedule, schedule your priorities. Don't prioritize a schedule because this is for the believer and follower. For the person who just believes, this, is, this doesn't make sense. For the person who says, watching online or in the worship center this morning, I believe and follow, you just don't make a schedule and you make sure that God has already prioritized in your schedule, I would argue first. Jesus himself says, listen, all of these things that you want, some of our things that we want together, they overlap, they're the same. But there's something you want that I don't and there's something I want that you could care less about. Jesus says, those things I will fulfill, I will give you, but seek first the kingdom of God. It is why it's commandment number one, right? That should have no other gods before me. The whole idea is, no, it's not about just prior having a schedule, go from here to there, and then there, and then there, I go here, that's great. But what we're not doing, the evacuation route says, no, you have to schedule your priorities. What you love the most and what you want to be and what you want to accomplish should show up in your calendar first and the rest of life is built around it. The Bible says that a wise man gives action to his steps. That means an unwise man or woman or follower or believer, an unwise Christian their day takes control of them instead of them controlling their day. See, the evacuation route consists of, we gotta get our calendars right. The calendar, our calendar, should reflect what means the most to us. Time spent with the people we love. Time spent with the people who enrich my life and make it more fulfilling. Of course, relax time. Of course, that's summer, right? Vacations. Time getting things done. But what's happening is we get down the road of life and we turn around and we go, man, I just kind of feel like I didn't get anything done. I didn't accomplish it. My relationships are in the same spot. I'm, I'm kind of stagnant in my profession. Look back at the calendar. Look back at what you're pouring your life into. There's a difference between spending time and investing time. There's a difference between spending time and investing time. Most of us, without this next scripture, we spend time, we don't invest time. This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads. And I feel like a lot of times summer is a crossroad because it's kind of a different season. Our routines are different. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it and you will find, what's that word? <laughs> who, who could enjoy a little bit of rest right now, right? Yeah, understand in God's economy, in biblical economy, in God's kingdom, rest comes from reflection. Rest comes from reflection. Stand at the ancient paths. Stand at a place and look. Look where? Ancient, behind. Look at the past and look what's happened. So rest comes from reflection. The problem is we are so scheduled or so running, we actually don't have real time to reflect and implement. All we do is go, yeah, that's nice. Boom, when we're going right away. But rest in the biblical economy comes from reflection. What, what habits do successful people have? Reflect. What habits do spiritually, do spiritual giants, let's say, reflect? What, what habits, what disciplines do the people who have conquered mountains and come out of valleys professionally, relationally, spiritually, what, what, what disciplines do they have? Reflect. No, but we just go. We just go. 
And then we go, we don't have rest. And we don't have rest. We don't have, and then what's the first thing to drop off is whatever we do at church. Because like, I don't have time for that. See, I knew that it would get quiet right about there. And we got about 20 minutes. It's, gonna, it's actually going to get worse. But I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to you. This is what it would be like. I'm just showing you what it's like when we just talk to the next generation leaders. So it's not to you. Don't be upset. This is just kind of some of the stuff. I, we get to, it's no filter. It's no filter. You know what's interesting? Is the world and culture and society will use no filter, trying to bend and mold and shape the next generation. And we as Christians a lot of time put on a bunch of filters because we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Right, right. Well, what's funny is our students, they just, they, they keep coming. <laughs> Maybe it's because what I have found is that people usually rise to the level of your expectation. Isn't that what Jesus did? Isn't that what Jesus did? There were certain things in the Old Testament he said that were all law, but then he said if you ever think on them, if you ever have them in your heart, if they're ever in your mind, he just raises the bar. He just raises the bar. He speaks the truth in love. Truth is always connected to love. You cannot have both in the biblical economy. But it doesn't mean that it can't be just straight up all in your face. There's an evacuation route that's been predetermined because destruction is coming. And what I have found now in nine years as your pastor is this is an area where we need help because our calendar and our time is not spent. Why are we keep tripping over the same sins and the same situations? Why do I keep dating the same losers? Why do I keep dating? Why do I can't I figure out what God wants? Why can't I da da da? It's because what's not calendared is what we want most and what we love most and what we cherish most already doesn't have a place in our timeline and then life comes in and sucks up everything we have. A successful life is not a full life. A successful life is a life that says, I believe God wants me to do this and when he wants me to do it and then we achieve it. A successful life has nothing to do with capacity. A successful life has everything to do with fulfilling what God has for my life. See, see, it's better to have one hand full with peace and tranquility than two hands jamming and slamming all the way Monday through Saturday. This, this is the way we, this is not about you, this is the way we talk to the interns. Everybody following me so far? This is what the internship looks like. All right, ready? Ready? This is what's interesting. There's something, second thing, an evacuation route, a prayer route that's been predetermined. You have to schedule your priorities, not prioritize the schedule. Growing up in Brooklyn, our houses, this is where this point comes from, were really close to each other. So I could come, I could come off the second floor to the landing, right, before you go to the first floor, and I could look outside the window on the landing and look right into my neighbor's house. Often, if the neighbor got up the same time we did, we would actually say hello through the window. Isn't that a little weird? Isn't that bizarre? But that's the way I grew up. That was it. It was really close. Little tiny skinny driveways, right? You could fit your car in. If you went in front first with the car, you just had enough room just to get out of the car, but the car was in your driveway. If you didn't like your neighbor, you backed the car in and you opened the car door and hit their house. This is what you did, all right? It's just a little skinny. And then I remember my dad saved up money and he put a gate around just our little piece of property. Just one of those gates, you know, where we didn't have cell phones, we didn't have big beepers, we had nothing. We had nothing. And my dad would call my mom and say, hey, I'm leaving work. We figured traffic and everything, 35 minutes. And at 35 minutes from the time my dad called, my job was to wait in the driveway. So when he would drive up, I'd walk over to the fence, the gate, right? And I'd take that little metal latch that goes around the pole and I'd open it up. And then that stick that was in the concrete and I'd lift it up and I'd open the gate. 
and I'd open the gate for him. I knew what kind of night we were going to have because if I was standing there waiting on my dad and he drove up and I was like, I'm here. If he smiled back, that's a good night. If he just stoic, stone-faced, I was like, I tried to make plans with friends because <laughs> it was not going to be a good night. But my job was to open and close the gate. That was my job. I never failed. I never failed. I was always there when I was supposed to. It was fantastic. But I'm telling you, every night we went to bed, it wasn't I love you. It wasn't you're the best son. It wasn't. It was, hey, did you check the gate? Yes, I checked the gates. Cl- Mom, the gates, check it again. Why? No ghost. There's going to be no ghost to open up the gate. You go out, you look in the driveway, the gate, and then you'd have to come in and go, gates closed. It was what you heard in the house all the time. Check the gate. Close the gate. Are you, then we got a dog. And then it was like the gate was like the gates of heaven, right? Don't make sure you, if that dog gets out, I will tell you what. Just close the gate, constantly told, check the gate. The gate was like the most important. I was not loved when I was a child, but I was a good gatekeeper. It was just all about the gate, right? Yeah, enter through the narrow gate, Jesus says, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction and may enter and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Not only does the evacuation route to keep us out of danger tell us that we have to schedule our priorities first, but what the evacuation route tells us is you gotta check the gate. You gotta check the gate. And I'm gonna say it like this, because this is the way, not to you, but this is what it would be like if we were talking to the interns. You have got to have a gate on what you let in your ears, what you allow your eyes to see, and what comes out of that mouth. You gotta put a gate on it. Because it can't be we look at everything. It can't be that we don't have a gate on things we listen to. It can't be that we don't have a gate on who we follow on social media. It can't be that I just let my eyes absorb whatever's in front of it. It can't, you gotta check the gate. You, you gotta constantly check the gate. Because if the gate is just wide open all the time, anything gets in and anything gets out. Why the heck do we have a gate? Why was I told, check? The gate, close the gate, make sure the gate is because for those, according to Jesus, who don't really believe and follow, the road's just wide, everything. We watch everything. We listen to everything. I would say that you got to watch the music you listen to. I would say you got to watch the movies you go to. I would say you got to watch, be careful of those who you follow on social media. Because it, it just can't be the gate's wide open all the time. What keeps us out of destruction is the evacuation route. We prioritize things on our schedule and we check the gate. We always check the gate. And let me give you a a little something that when I first started like a personal relationship, because I just lived a, a great part of my life with no gate, no filter. Pick things in your life. Ready? I like to call it like this. Pick the non God stuff. Whether it's music, videos, movies, who we follow, what we post, it doesn't matter. Pick the non-God stuff. Create a line. Create a plumb line for what that is. And then wrestle with that. That's how you start a gate in your life. Then wrestle with it. Forget about whether it's right or wrong. Just say, you know what? I'll go to all of these kind of movies, but I won't go to those movies. And then wrestle, grapple. grapple with that and what grappling means is that we continually check the gate and we go God what is that movie all right 
Should I follow her? Should I follow him on social media? Should I post this? You grapple, you wrestle with it because the gate can't just be all open. The gate, the gate just can't be. Because there's a route, it's called the evacuation route, that keeps us out of destruction. You, you, you gotta wrestle with the things of this life and we all do. We all do it, and it has a lot of times nothing to do with how much we love God or he loves us. It has to do with we're just not reflecting. The gate has been wide open on our mouths, on our eyes, and our ears, and what's happening is we're slowly drifting. I have the right to do anything, and we have forgotten about this in our culture. Listen. Oh, come on. I can go to any movie I want. I can say it's free, First Amendment. I can say whatever I want. Last year in our internship, some of the buzz questions we had was this. Hey, Pastor Q, if, if, if they legalize marijuana, are you going to smoke it? I was like, I, I only smoke the good stuff. I'm just kidding. No. That's babies. Listen to me. That's baby Christianity. You want to know Why? Because those who believe and follow, it's never as you grow, it goes from, it's just not right and wrong, it goes to, is it wise? Is it wise? And isn't it what the Apostle Paul said? I have the right to do anything. That's what you say sometimes. But not everything is beneficial. Beneficial based on what? Beneficial on based on who God called me to be. Beneficial on what he wants me to do. Beneficial on that I want my family to stay together so I don't look at that. That's right. be- because I want, I want to be a model for my children so that they don't end up in, in calamity relationally for the first time generationally in my family so I don't go there. Oh, I got the right to go there, but I don't go there because what I want, what going there doesn't benefit what I want. So you go past this right and wrong thing and you go to, is it wise based on what I'm looking to have in my life? It says, you have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but not everything is constructive. Adding my voice many times or our voices on social media doesn't really do anything. It just adds another turd to the pool. But this is not to you. This is just how some... We talk to the interns. So you're just, it's not you I'm talking to. It's just, because it's not constructive. It's not constructive. It doesn't build up the kingdom. It doesn't build up its leaders. It doesn't build up, it doesn't build anything. I just throw another thing in the garbage. I just kick another can to the trash. So can you? Can you do anything? Of course you can. It is for freedom that Christ set us free. But freedom doesn't just because you can, doesn't. We say this a lot here. Doesn't mean you should. All right. So so there's this path that keeps you out of destruction. And it's prioritizing, scheduling first the things that matter most. Otherwise, time will eat you alive. And I would argue God's got to be on that schedule. God's got to be on that calendar. And then we constantly check the gate. We just check the gate. We set a line and bring it before God. Talk to him. I'm going to this movie. I don't feel bad about it, but there's some stuff in it. You know, I do follow some people. I just kind of. Why? Why? It's because don't, listen what the psalmist says, don't let me drift toward evil or take part in acts of wickedness. Don't let me share in the delicacies, the small little things. They're just the tiny things of those who do wrong. The key word, how I read the scripture, the key word there is drift. I don't know of anybody who got up yesterday and went, this is going to be fantastic. I am going to go ahead and ruin as many marriages as I can. I don't know of anybody who got up yesterday and went, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get addicted to something so it'll destroy everything in my life. 
Mm -mm. Because it's a drift. It's just, it's just slowly, just kind of, it's kind of, I know this sounds trite, but listen to me. We were water baptizing yesterday at Fred Howard Park over at the beach. Over two hours. I know exactly where we started. We started where there was no seaweed. Because I have to see my feet, otherwise I'm out. I'm not doing it. <laughs> right? And we were in the, and, and every little bit, all of a sudden we would turn around and all of a sudden I'd look around and, and it was all the seaweed around me again. And I was like, well, the seaweed moved. No, it didn't because that was the spot because it was totally clear. And I had to go back to the place that I knew. It was just little by little, you, you just drift. You check the gate. With no checking the gate, you will drift into someone and something with someone or with something that God did not intend for your life. I'm telling you. But I'm not talking to you. This is the way, this is the leadership stuff. That, like, is, this is like what, how we talk to our, intern, our leadership interns. This will be a fun one. Ready? Third thing, this road. You got to organize your financing, finances around giving, saving, and living. Oh, you're going to talk about money. Yep. <laughs> yep. Let me tell you. 72% percent of Americans live with over $65,000 of debt. And they are, those same percentage, one paycheck away from not being able to make bills. It's because both hands are full. It's because both hands are full. And it is still one of the top Three reasons why relationships end up in the shambles and marriages. Money. Of course, Pastor Q, of course you're going to talk about money and finances. Rumor is the chapel bought a shopping center. Can I just tell you, we run, I intentionally lead this church and we only spend 60% of what you give. That's everything from paying our troopers to the electricity to the salaries. There's over 40% of margin so that when the single mom comes to this church and said, I need a help in a time of crisis, we can help them. So I just, I want to say it like we would say it to the interns. I will never ask you for something. I want something for you. I stand here intentionally leading this church, spending only 60% of what you give so I don't have to stand here and need an offering. I don't need an offering. God doesn't need an offering. So let's be clear about when I and this church talks about money. And I am sorry that you have maybe attended a church before that abused and basically lied about what they were going to do. I hate it. It makes my job harder. But don't you let the enemy keep you from a vast blessing when we put him first in everything in our life. That's the idea. We have so much trouble. And let me tell you why we stress this with the next generation leader. Because if they don't have to be slave to someone or something like debt, their whole entire life is a canvas for God to use them for godly change. Let me tell you, it's not about money. Watch me, is what we always say. It's about first. It's about the principle of first. Seek ye first the kingdom. You hear it over and over. And you, all these things will be added to you. All the things that you do, all the things that you're thinking in my timing, not yours. First, it's the principle of first because it takes more faith to live on what is left after you give to God first. USA Today article last week came out. 71% of Americans sleep with their phones. They either sleep with it in a bed or in a nightstand. And what's happening is we're getting up and we're first checking email, text messaging, social media. Nobody said we couldn't have email, text messages, or social media. God says, but I, I have to be first. 
And so he's not first. See, it's the idea. It's not about money. It's about the principle of first. Here's something. Ready? Honor God with everything you own. Give him the first and the best. Let me just share. If you're here for the first time, uh, you might not realize this, but let me tell you something I'm, uh, I'm grappling with right now with our elders. God owns it all. God owns it all. It's all his. But what we say in church, listen to me, is we say we're about to give our offering. We're about to give. How can you give something to someone who already owns it all? It's theirs. You're not giving it to him. He owns it. But what we are doing is returning a portion so we can live by faith. What we're doing is returning a portion because it's all his. So what we're doing is we're returning a portion. I'm, I'm, I'm wrestling with this. The more that the Lord reveals like the, the, the idea of first, it's first. It's first in everything in our life, including what we own in our possessions. It was interesting that in the Old Testament, what they told the Jewish people was unless you Sabbath, if, they, if the people didn't Sabbath in the Old Testament, right? You know what they did to them? They killed them. They actually killed them. Watch. Why? <laughs> because if you don't learn to put God, which we're doing today, the first day of the week, if we don't learn to put God first, we'll actually maybe begin to believe that everything we have and everything we do and every creative thought is because of us and not him. And if that mentality permeates everything in your life, destruction. You better get on the evacuation route. It was a rabbi friend that taught me in the New Testament when Jesus spoke on the Sabbath. He said, remember, the Jewish people, it's different. It's a different thinking, not better. We rest. Woo, we Sabbath. We take a rest because we're tired. Woo, I need a break. got to rest. He said, the Jewish people, we, we rest. We Sabbath because we need rest. The Jewish people Sabbath so they didn't get tired. We, we, we're tired. We get tired. So we said, he said, the Jewish people, what they would do is they would, because they knew without that, they would be tired. See, it's a different mindset. It's about first. Here, here's just a story. Old Testament. Jesus talks about giving first in the New Testament. Here's Old Testament. And it came in the process of time. It came to pass that Cain brought an offering. Two brothers, Cain and Abel. One killed the other. This is the beginning of the story. In the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of fruit of the ground to the Lord. He brings an offering to find his favor, to find his blessing. This is Old Testament. Abel, his brother, also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. What's the difference between the two offerings? They're both wonderful. One was given first, and the other one gave from the leftovers. It's first. See, churches, religious leaders, Christian, they've made this about money. It's not about money. It's about the law of first. It's about the principle of first. The only difference between the offerings is one was given first, one wasn't. Because it requires another level of faith to give back to God a portion that's already his and allow him to bless the rest and see what he can do with the rest. That's it. And I'm telling you, be careful to prioritize the things that are most important to you. They should show up on a calendar. They should show up first, including God. It's part of the path that's already been determined. It's part of the path that's already been determined to keep us away from destruction. It's called an evacuation route. I just happen to be telling you the way we would tell the interns. I wouldn't talk to you this way, but it's just the way we would talk to the interns. Check the gate. Check the gate on your eyes, your ears. And I'll say this, because you're an intern, you better check some of that Christian mumbo-jumbo stuff you listen to, too. 
Because a lot of it's not Bible-based. It's self-based. You got to check the gate on the things that enter our ears and our eyes and the stuff that comes out of our mouth. And then do not allow yourself to be slave to something. Whether it's a device in your hand or whether it's debt. And I've said this before, we get calls all the time. You cannot just wake up and start this, but you gotta have a path. Call the church, email the church. We have wonderful people that can help you get on the right path to going giving, saving, and living. Because it ain't living when you a slave. That's the path. But that's the way that I would say it to an intern, not to you, because you guys would never come back. Let me show you something real quick, just so we're clear. Did you know that part, because part of your giving, you know, sometimes you don't even realize it. We don't even do a good job at telling you where part of your giving goes. When the government shutdown happened earlier in the year, you wouldn't believe how many families of this church were affected. Did you know that your giving helped them through that crisis? It was phenomenal. Did you know that a portion of our giving here, we plant life-giving churches, planted 33. We helped plant 33 and coach half of them now. And out of those 33 churches, over 500 first-time salvations. Can I get an amen right there? The stuff that really matters. Can I tell you it's your church? With the the Easter services we did, over 6,000 people came to God's house to celebrate his resurrection, and there were almost 300 first-time salvations this Easter right here at your church. Yeah, And, and can I tell you this? Can I tell you this? Our collective quarterly outreach, if you don't know about it, you gotta be part of it. The next one is in July. Our team goes out and aggregates all the needs that we can get and that we know of We bring them in and we organize all of the things that are needed to purchase, to buy, whatever it is, to meet those needs. Every single collective outreach is always 100% paid for by your church. Always. Every need that comes, every need that we know about. Every need that we know about. Well, I've got a need for this neighbor. I got, you better call the church. And it's not to be a government. We meet the need, letting them know we do this because Jesus isn't dead, he's alive. And I am his hands and feet. Do you know Christ? That's why we do it. That's why we do it. Sometimes we don't even know. Here's something that gets me up in the morning. That's some of our men of this church after getting the civil engineering plan from the county, there's a laundry list of things that we had to do to the shopping center to get it up to snuff, and we knew that. And many men in our church went, I can do that, I can be part of that, I can be over there, I can contribute to that, I've got time, I don't have that, but I got a shovel, I don't have that, but I did this before. Saved the church thousands of dollars by being part of the team that understands it's all his. From time to money. So I'm just returning a portion. This is what we would say if if you were an intern. You get closer to God when you give to godly things. What? That sounds so manipulative, Pastor Cute. Well, you don't know the Bible. For where your treasure is, the things that you value, I don't care whether it's money or time or a jet ski or a house or a car. The things that you value, the things that you value, the things that you treasure, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. When we take our treasure and we apply them to godly things, it connects me more with God. See, see what what those men understand and what we'll all have an opportunity to play a part at some point is that that's, that's what I treasure. 
is where I go to church. That's where I treasure. That's where I worship. That's where I, what I treasure. That's where I learn about Christ. That's where, so I put the things that I have, my shovel and time. Ain't nobody laying dollar bills on the concrete there. Yeah. Don't let the enemy make you think this is about money. <laughs> it's about first. And so their heart attaches when we give to the things of God, our heart attaches. Why? Because it's scriptural. Because our heart attaches then to God. There is a path that keeps us out of destruction. And that path is paved with not just a schedule, but scheduling our priorities first. And one of those is God time. That path is, is paved with checking the gate. Checking the gate on our eyes and our ears and what comes out of our mouth. Because if we're not careful, we'll just drift. Keeps us out of the destruction, that path. And then I live by the biblical principle because I'm a Christian and I'm becoming more selfless than selfish. And I give and I save so I'm not slave to nothing. I give. I save and I live because my treasure is my relationship with God. Amen? Amen. But this is the way, don't get mad or upset about the way I said it, because I was just giving you an example on what we would say to, you know, interns. Bow your heads, let me pray for you. Thank you, Lord, so much that, Lord, you've always given us a path to life, that you've always given us a path and a way out. Lord, teach us to lean into who you are, to love people the way you love them, and see people the way you see us. Cause us this week, Lord, to make first things first, the most important things first, that you show up on our schedules, that we watch what we see, hear, and say. And Lord, most of all, teach us where we need to practice first for your best. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen.